Hey everybody, Oliver Joyce here, and today I want to talk about, surprise, Swords and Sandals Crusader Redux, which is what I've been talking about the last um, 500 videos or so, <laughs> um, because of course the game has been launched um, a couple of weeks ago, and I've done four, count them, four large patches for the game since, because it's a complicated beast and there's a lot that's going on in there, so um, it's been a lot of bugs and balancing and things like that. You can do as many beaters as you want. But uh, it's only when you put the game out in the real world that you realize what the flaws are and what you need to change. And so I've been working very hard to update the game. So if you haven't played it since the beta or um, if you played one of the early versions before the patches, check out the new version on Steam. I just put another patch up uh, overnight, which, um, you know, changes the game again. And, you know, it's an iterative process. And I um, look forward to seeing what you think of the latest build. What I thought I'd do today, though, was um, just show you how I play the game with um, the first in a couple of um, strategy guide style videos. Um, I wanted to just show you some tips and tricks on, you know, just defeating the computer AI and, um, you know, getting the most out of your battles. The first one I'm going to start with is the survival mode, which is, of course, um, an endless wave style game where you fight uh, army after army after army of increasingly stronger troops and of course some uh, big bad wandering monsters at the end so let's jump in and we'll choose an army and i'll just show you um, a few tips and tricks on getting as far as um, as you can all right okay swords and sandals crusader redux we'll skip the introduction for those who uh You've all seen it, I'm sure, because you all own the game, right? <laughs> um, I'm playing 1.0.4D, so make sure when Steam you've updated the game so you can follow along. New game, survival mode. Now, all these modes are now unlocked. In the very first version of this that was released, they were locked off until you reached certain character levels. But um, because of popular demand and fan feedback, I've unlocked them all. Because, you know, you want to play the game you want the way you want to play. You don't always want to have to go through the long campaign just to unlock various game modes. So I listen to you guys. Sometimes you know better than I do. Survival mode. In survival mode you face increasingly more difficult waves of enemies uh, up to the um, monsters and so on. People tell me Antares is the easiest character to use in this because he has raised the dead. They are right um, to a point but in this latest patch um, actually 0 .1, 0 .03, um the raise the dead they don't continue after the battle so they'll survive during the battle but once the battle's over they're gone so you still gradually will lose your troops in early versions of it you didn't lose your soldiers uh, and so you'd basically you know just keep your army would just go on pretty much for infinity uh, okay he chaos is who I'm going to use today because um, he's got lightning strike and he has archery which improves rage troops damage which is very important in survival mode I favor range troops quite heavily we're fighting um, Bors the Mighty first up. Good old Bors. These first battles, you're not really expected to lose any troops. Maybe one or two, but you, um, you're you unlikely to. Sometimes you get unlucky and they will cast a spell on you. Um, you usually want to lead with something like a Lightning Bolt. I've taken out a bunch of them. As the battles get tougher, you want to start using your ranged troops early to take out their ranged troops because they can cause you trouble. Uh, it doesn't really matter who we choose. Colossus is a good one because they have so many health um, points that you don't really have to worry about losing them. Let's just finish them off with some arrows. Alright, as expected, we didn't lose anybody. I like Ikeos' little uh, victory thing. All right, when you win a round of survival, you can upgrade your troops. You can add reinforcements and so on. You start off, and I'll show you in the next battle, you start off not with a full complement of 100 soldiers, but only 70. But you can increase these guys by 10, 10, 10, 10. Um, no more than 100, though. So let's level up our leader. I think that's very important, and I'll show you why. Belgrave in the Templar Church next. And... Now notice that we're level 11 and they're only level 2. You level up by 10 for every time you update that. Uh, once all those sort of upgrade things are gone, you can upgrade again. Uh, and they will upgrade one level per survival round. Okay. Uh, 
as these rounds get on, you really have to hope that they don't use their powers. Because even if the armies are weak, the leader's powers are often not. And they can kind of decimate your army. You've got to be a bit lucky. Okay, we've heard a few of them. Not as dam much damage as I had hoped. But when you do level up, your um, spell powers get up to, uh, updated as well. They get more. They level up. All right, uh, let's send the Colossus in. You can choose Furious, does more damage. Tactical, does uh, you know better chance to hit. And Defensive Attack, um, you know, it's more defensive. I just realized that I've called it Cautious there and Defensive there. I need to change that. Another bug. Well, not a bug, an inconsistency. <laughs> All right, we will use Call Lightning on these guys again. Belgrave doesn't have any offensive spells. He's got Mass Heal and armor, I believe. Okay, we didn't lose a troop again. Great. So far, the strategy guide is working excellently. Okay. Um, let's upgrade the range troops, because I find them... I, we, I mean, I use them quite heavily. Selenham got next, and I find upgrading them can really take out enemies in one hit. So their army's now getting bigger. They've got um, 27 guys there now, level 3, we're still level 11. Let's fire some arrows at their range guys, take them all out in one fell swoop. Every second turn, they'll attack first, or every second battle. Just to keep it fair. Cavalry next, defensive. They hurt us, actually, that was uh, not so good. So maybe that wasn't as well. Heavy, heavy troops have good defense and good um, damage. Aim at their heavy because they're all injured. I probably should have used an airstrike, but notice how my ranged archers are quite powerful. I'm going to send the Colossus again. Defensive attack. Fire arrows. They haven't used uh, their powers much. One guy left. Let's send in a light troop. Yeah, didn't matter. So we lost one cavalry in that battle. Uh, you know, that's okay. And as we go through, we're going to keep updating these guys. Use the reinforcements when your troops get lower and lower, as they sure will once the spells start happening. Upgrade cavalry. King Lionel. Ride to battle, lions. For glory, for fate or. Okay. So it's likely they will probably start using their spells. Got some range troops there. Let's try an airstrike. I mean, a lot call lightning. I, I kind of call it default, call it airstrike, but you know, it's their offensive power spell. That was good. That really did a lot of damage. And we'll send in the cavalry defensively. Because the cavalry actually, um, they can go down easily. They do a lot of damage offensively, but they. Um, a little bit brittle sometimes. Oh, okay, here we go. Not bad. We didn't lose many. Some per people were hurt, but... Let's send in the Colossus. He's got... Pretty... Yeah, he's, you know, he's about half health. Some leaders have the healing power, and that um, is great when you want to keep using your Colossus. So if you have a leader like Belgrave that has mass heal, um, you want to use that. Let's aim at the cavalry. Pepper them up. Should probably one more of those should do the damage. I think Zizabal will survive that. Yeah, great. All right, it's all over for King Lionel. And luckily, he didn't use both his powers. It's only in the later rounds that the leaders start sort of coming into battle as well. They have sort of a um, they can go in in earlier rounds, but the odds are that they won't bother because they know the battles. You know, there's no point in them dying. Okay, uh, upgrade heavy. We can get some range reinforcements. Let's do that. And really double down on our um, range troops. That was a bit risky, because sometimes you want to do that a bit later when you've actually lost a bunch. But Okay, Antares has his rays dead, which can be a problem. We can take out his range guys. Knock them all out in one fell swoop. That's pretty good. And send in the Colossus defensive they hurt him they hurt him a bit lightning bolt 
Mm, not as powerful as I would hoped, but cavalry have a few guys to hurt, but I think we can send them in. Maybe with a tactical attack. Tactical is good as you, you basically it's sort of guaranteeing that you're going to hurt them, even if it doesn't do a full um, amount of damage, as much as a furious attack does. It does some damage and more than a defensive attack. All those numbers are kind of hidden because I feel like it'd be too much information for the player, but you know, it can be good to know. Let's attack their cavalry. Ah, oh, he used his rays dead. That's disappointing. I guess you had to face Antares at some point. You want to face him early, ideally. That can be very demoralizing, seeing them all come back like that. I'm going to use a lightning bolt on him again. See if I can uh, remove them from the battlefield. Yeah, that was pretty good. He Chaos's lightning bolt is quite powerful, and as you level up again, it will get more and more powerful. Okay. Hmm. Heavy troops, defensive attack. Ah, oh, yeah. Fire arrows at the heavy. Let's take those guys out. What's he using? Cause fear. That's not good. Oh. Oh, we just lost a lot of troops there. Antares is a tough. He's a tough one to fight. But now we've both used all our powers. It just comes down to our soldiers. Now it's just about... We've won this battle. It's just about sort of, you know, pip, taking off the uh, stragglers. If you don't want to lose your troops, don't forget you can send in um, your leader. That's an option as well. Uh, you know, the risk there, if I send him in now, there's no real point, is that they will either send in their leader, and then you've got to basically, it's, you know, one versus one for the battle. Or, you know, if your leader falls, it's all over too. So it's a risk. Especially in survival mode, when the leader falls, it's all over. It doesn't matter how many troops are left in the army. Okay, um, let's upgrade our heavy. We don't need reinforcements just yet. Round six. But now the battles get bigger and bigger. Wolfgang's here. I think he has a lightning bolt as well. I can't remember for sure. Let's call lightning. Oh yeah. Electrifying. Uh, upgraded heavy troops, defensive attack. Notice they now have like different sprites. So not, if you have been following along, originally Crusader, they only had um, the same sort of images when you upgraded them, but they get little cool helmets and so on. These guys get helmets when they're upgraded, but they're not upgraded at the moment. He, haven't, he hasn't bothered to, but it took me a day or two to draw the new, draw the new sprites, but it was so worth it, I think. Ah, yeah, <laughs> morale is broken. Poor Baron Wolfgang. He got drunk and uh, didn't do the kind of leadership we all hoped for. Yeah. He didn't use his spells either. Um, you know, it's random whether that's going to happen. There is a bit of AI towards it, but if I made them use it every time, the battle would be a bit unfair and you'd lose all your troops straight away. So I kind of, have, you know, nerfed them a little bit. Now we move on to... Let's get some cavalry reinforcements. Round 7. Actually, I should have held off on that. I want to try and hold off on those things until you actually fight um, the wandering monsters. Okay, now the first uh, Colossus appears. So you want to save your Colossus and keep them as healthy as possible for when they start using theirs. And you don't know exactly when that's going to be, but... It will come. Okay, we lost a few guys there. We're very low. Oh, we've lost most of our range troops as well. I didn't realize how many had kind of gone. Okay, that's no good. Oh, they've led with their primate. Core lightning. Unfortunately, the range troops do a lot of damage, but they are very, very weak, and they are often the first to go. Uh, cavalry, tactical attack. That worked quite well. Defensive attack when you have few troops, tactical when you're about even, 
furious when you outnumber them quite a lot. That's my rule of thumb with that. Uh, no, let's use another one. Call lightning. War drums. They're going to try and scare us off. Didn't work. I lost one. Primate's almost gone. Let's see if we can send our Colossus in. I want to ha have a Colossus battle. That'll be kind of fun. Let's go hold fast. We don't want to lose any of the troops at this point. Build up our morale again. Colossus in for a tactical attack. Here we go. Yeah, he didn't have enough health. I like those battles. Sometimes they don't go for as long as they could, but they're kind of fun. Shades of the old classic Crusader. All right, hold fast again. We haven't taken out that range troop, so it doesn't really matter at this point. Oh, there they go. <laughs> He's going to start fleeing soon as well. Colossus, tactical attack. We'll probably risk another attack with him at this point. But he's in no danger of dying. Yeah, good, got him. Victory is yours! Okay, we now probably should get some reinforcements. Heavy reinforcements. All right, here we go. The Yeti Project. Everyone's favorite from Swords and Sandals 3. <laughs> he was famous for being the hardest boss in the game, even though he only appeared sort of halfway through the game. So it was a little Easter egg. I thought I'd put him in this game for fun. Now, it's very hard to win these ones but you want to use your spells early because they can take down an entire rose very quickly but watch this 500 off i wish i'd had my range troops here would have made a bit of a difference we're going to send in our cavalry defensively actually i wonder furious attack we want to try and do as much damage as we can cool lightning that was a good one some point I'm probably going to send in the king, uh, in the king, the chaos. If, uh, okay, oh, it's going to be interesting. Hold fast, defensively. Colossus, furious attack. Whoa, whoa. I've got one archer left. What's the point? Colossus Furious. Oh no. Send our heavy troops in. Defensive. That was good. I think these guys might save the day. Heavy defensive. Oh, it's tense, isn't it? Cavalry defensive. Oh, that was a waste of time. <laughs> what was I thinking? Some strategy guide, huh? Um, we need to be able to take this guy down before he... It's a war of attrition. Oh, dear. Soon I'm going to have to bring in Lionel. I mean, he chaos. I keep thinking I've got King Lionel. Oh, okay. That's not good. Real... King Lion, oh, he chaos is coming in. Okay, Colossus, tactical attack. Oh, it is down to you and it's down to me. Can we take him out? No. Ah. So the strategy is um, get good. You have perished. We reach round eight. There you go. Some strategy guide, huh? Um, yeah. 
they are tough when you get to those bosses. Uh, you're not really expected to be able to beat more than one or two of them. And it does randomize which sort of wandering monster you do fight. It is kind of like, you get there, you know, it's sort of the end game anyway of that mode. Um, but if you do beat one, that's awesome. I could have probably beaten him if I'd sort of looked after my range troops a bit better and had a bit of better luck with the enemy attacks. And I think I should have maybe um, held off on reinforcements for them until the end because that was a real advantage I sort of squandered. But I'd love to know your strategies for this. Um, a lot of people that play this game are much better than I am. And, you know, you guys play it more than I do sometimes. And even now, people are telling me strategies that I thought, oh, that's a great idea. So let me know in the comments, uh, how do you play the survival mode and how far have you gotten? I know it used to be easier than it is now. Uh, realistically, you're probably unlikely to reach, you know, more than about 9 or 10, but you never know. If it does get too hard for you i might nerf the whole mode a bit you know because i still want you know you to be able to at least beat that first boss um thank you for watching of course um if you like you know what you see and if you like swords and sandals and so on and you're new to the channel please subscribe and you know hit the little bell and you get notified you know how youtube works um thanks to everybody who has um bought the game uh, I do appreciate it, and thanks for leaving the reviews on Steam. Um, we've got about thirty something reviews, which isn't you know isn't huge, but um, it certainly is uh, a, a positive you know thing. It's, it's actually almost it's mostly positive. We need one more good review, just one, and they'll be into the positive category. So, if you are that person that's played the game and hasn't reviewed it yet and liked it, you can make a big difference. So, um, <laughs> all right. Anyway. Um, I'm off now to go uh, patch Swords and Sandals 2 Redux. Remember that game? That has um, time has come to finally um, park Crusader for a little while and patch the other games. There will be a mobile version of uh, Crusader Redux coming in the next month or so, but um, before the end of the year anyway. But for now, I want to just patch the um, older games and give them a bit of love because they uh, have been a bit neglected this year while I worked on Crusader. All right, my friends, uh, until next time, enjoy Crusader Redux. Enjoy my strategy guide. Learn from it. Learn what not to do. And uh, I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.